And then there were two. India, South Africa, who would have guessed that at the beginning of the tournament? Probably 50% of that, most of us would have. But South Africa through to the finals. Well, it's going to be an exciting one or maybe a one-sided one sided one given uh, India's annihilation of England. Obviously, Afghanistan, South Africa for all our chat and bringing up Afghanistan in the previous game didn't quite go to plan. But what an underwhelming semi-finals where three of the four teams that batted didn't get over 104. <laughs> but uh, probably the most, the two most one-sided semi-finals we've seen um, in a long time in in, in World in World Cups. But anyways, got Moin here with me. We'll discuss briefly what happened in the semi-finals, and then of course preview the final or the platform for India to lift the trophy, whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> But Moin, let's quickly start off with uh, Afghanistan, South Africa, maybe, because as that match was pretty quick anyways, <laughs> uh, and then move on to in India's phenomenal victory over England. Well, I mean, you know, it's one of those games where you blink and you've missed it. Uh, like, look, uh, Afghanistan won the toss. Uh, you know, they chose to bat first. And I think they, you know, in fairness to them, they played to their strengths, right? They... They've won most of their games batting first. They haven't been successful chasing because they rely on their bowling to win games. I don't fault that decision. But, you know, yes, they could have read the conditions a bit better, but no one could have expected the conditions to play up as much as they did in Trinidad, right? I mean, you know, it wasn't like they were playing in New York, Florida. I mean, it was, it was Trinidad. And, um, you know, and, and I think they were expecting a, a, a more sort of, a more conventional surface, even if a little challenging. And and look, I think they just didn't adapt themselves, and I think they panicked. They after Gurbaz got out early, Zadar got out relatively early. It suddenly it, it just felt as if they didn't have a plan B, and not in a not in a, as big a game as the semi final, right? Uh, you know, I think they'll be kicking themselves because I think they'll think that if, even if they got to one twenty, it would have been game on. Or even even yeah. if they get to at least three figures, it would have been some sort of challenge. But as it happened, when you know you're chasing 56, I mean, the game is over before you come out to bat. So, yeah. you know, and that's the only criticism. Uh, you know, if I am being really harsh, uh, you know, my belief tends to be that if you are in unfamiliar territory and you're scared and, you know, you, you're up against a team that you consider to be a lot higher quality, there is merit in getting your strongest suit in the game first so that the game is not over before you unleash it, as it happened mm -hmm. today. Now, I'm being very harsh here, I, 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 and, and I accept that. But if I had to criticize... And, and say that, you know, and, and use hindsight, I would have said that is a way, a school of thought that perhaps may have been, um, you know, it may have been a good idea here, especially because when you're doing the suit you're strongest with, it allows you to ease into the game, you know, settle your nerves if you're not used to a semi-final or a, or, or a game as big as this, yeah. right? Um, if you're doing a weaker suit first and the pressure tells and you start crumbling. But in any case, look, South Africa were brilliant. Like, I mean, yeah. uh, yes, the conditions helped them, but you still need to get 10 wickets and restrict the opposition to 50-odd. And they did it, you know, and everyone chipped in. So full marks to them. I mean, they're not going to get as easy a game as this. I said <laughs> it in our, in, in, in our preview. I said, you're going to see the best of South Africa against Afghanistan and Kudos to them. They finally broken that semi-final voodoo, taken the monkey off the back. And hopefully this could be the start of a new era in South African cricket. Yeah, look, all, all credit to them. Uh, of course, the son maybe won one game too much for them. Particularly with some logistical issues, if you believe Michael Vaughan and, <laughs> and everyone. <laughs> it's true, um, though, yeah. It is tough, yeah, especially because they had to play the um, they had to play the game against Bangladesh in St. Vincent, and then the overnight call they had to fly the next morning, and then having to play again the next day. Ideally, would have wanted at least another day's gap, given that South Africa also had you know um, added an extra day's rest. It is what it is. Um, you know, we don't have I mean, scheduling and stuff. There've been a lot of logistical issues. Um, 
I'm sure we've got some Sri Lankan viewers who might have more to say about that. But, um, but and South but Africa it, too, in fairness. Yeah, true, true. They've had to travel, you know, to the US and and the West Indies. Um, but but yeah, exactly. So at the end of the day, you know, you've got to play well on the day. And of my son clearly did not, you know, they. And I guess that was the, that was always the fear, right? You get good good bars out early. I mean, even in the Australia game, the, the Bangladesh game as well, they, they got 60, 70 runs, right? The Yogi Parnish went So literally, they're scoring 70, 80% of your runs. <laughs> uh, I think it was like the, his fourth or, four, or the fourth or fifth 50 plus partnership. So even against Uganda or something where they scored 154, the rest of the team got to 180, right? So, I mean, <laughs> when the rest of the team is literally scoring like 10% of your runs or 20% of your runs, you know, they had to get found out. Um, so, so, but look, I mean, at the end of the day, specifically, yes, there's this game, no, but I mean, for Afghanistan reaching the semi final, phenomenal achievement. Um, probably at par, or maybe even uh, probably at par with Kenya in 2003, right? Uh, in terms of achievements, although those those were sli- slightly politically, or yeah, I don't know, they got a few buys and stuff, right? But, yeah, 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 this is completely, oh. you know, their own doing, and like yeah. given the ravaged, like the war torn country that they. Oh, yeah. coming from I think it's brilliant I think this yeah, is absolutely the biggest I mean, this, yeah, story. people have been have been seeing it for a while they've gotten close so many times against Australia they nearly did it and, and you know, so they've always been threatening and unlike Bangladesh who do threaten have threatened at times in the past Bangladesh um, Afghanistan have actually done it but um, but yeah I hope you know I'm sure there'll be much better things to come and they'll learn from it and become better um, but but let's move on to the other semi-final I mean, the irony is we, obviously Afghanistan, South Africa, Afghanistan won the toss, chose to bat. England won the toss and chose to bowl. So both teams that actually won the toss ended up losing, doing the thing that they preferred to do, uh, even though conditions might have suggested otherwise. And oh boy, did uh, did in- India make use of it. I mean, at, at, at halftime, you know, we thought, or even, you know, in the beginning, we thought 160 would have been a good score, but I think they were probably 140 would have been a good score on this pitch. Uh, it looked like, especially when India were bowling, it looked like one of those typical Chennai day, or Ahmedabad day, fa- day five pitches where no, Kuldeep mean, and actually were least... absolutely dominating. And let me clear any misconception here. The pitch hardly deteriorated, right? So yeah. if anyone comes and says, well, actually England had, the, you know, had un- tougher conditions, absolutely not. If anything, India had it when it was more overcast and they had to yeah. contend with those that extra sort of dimension. Look, um, do I blame the decision? No. And I say that because, look, hindsight's a wonderful thing. But if rain wasn't part of the equation, I would have said, yes, you know, there's merit in batting first, even if yeah. you want to repeat Adelaide 2022, <laughs> fair enough. But if you move on from that and, and and you know, play the game on its merit, I would have batted first. But with rain... I thought it was a no-brainer to bowl first yeah. because you never know when the rain's going to come and you want to have bat in hand because then you have greater control over what you need to get and by when, as opposed to uh, the bowling side when the most you can do is just bowl one ball at a time. I mean, you know, so there's an element that goes out of your control. I, I For me, it was like uh, I would support the decision if it happened again. I don't think they lost because of that decision. And they yeah, lost because just... you have a bowler, Chris Jordan, who conceded 12 runs and over on a pitch like that. I mean, that yeah. is shocking. You know, a pitch that where others struggled, you know, oh, sorry, other bowlers excel, batters struggled, so too paced, you know, and that's Chris Jordan's strength, his variations. Mm-hmm. And he went to 12 runs and over. I mean, it is mind boggling. That is the difference. I think the most expensive Indian bowlers, I, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't even think they went for more than six runs or six. Yeah, it was six just Arshdeep because he had that one bad over, right? Where he went for yeah, a three right. And that happened. literally is just one, you know? But yeah, exactly. Chris Jordan, forget those two wickets in two balls, okay? Like, it was too late by then. And even after that, yeah. he got talked, right? So, I thought he was... Still, and I think we said this before also, you know, the English media and the, somehow they rate him very highly, you know? Oh, Oh, Chris Jordan can do anything and everything. The only thing he did was take a good catch. That's it. Okay. That's absolutely... I mean, he got a hat-trick in the last game, right? So... <laughs> yeah, and, and see, this yeah. is the issue, right? You 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 get inflated <laughs> results against weaker opposition. You know, you bowl a couple good balls and, like, 
but if you look at consistency, the guy has gone for runs consistently. It's only against Pakistan that he he somehow does well, but against most yeah. countries, he's right. not a threat. So I think that was one of the reasons they lost. I think the other point was, you know, and I think that we were talking off air just earlier. It was good to get your views. Moin Ali, did Butler yeah. miss a trick by not bowling Moin Ali and obsessing over this matchup situation? Uh, what do look, you think? Look, I. I... I did think of it at, at the time, but you know, he, he bowled Livingston instead, who, to be fair to him, did a decent job. I think he got, um, you know, he went for under eight, I think. Um, yeah. And I mean, he, he came back after the rain break and India kind of played him out as well for the first couple of overs, which seemed a bit strange. I think they didn't hit him for like a big shot until his 12th or 11th de- delivery. Um, but look, I, 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 I never thought, especially given that Rohit and Sky were batting, that Moin Ali would have bowled. And by the time... Rohit got out. I think it was a bit too late anyway. So I, I, I get it, right? And it's not like Moin Ali is that good a bowler that you know, he would have done something. Whether you say he should have... I don't think Butler ever thought that he's going to take away overs away from Sam Curran or, or Jordan and bowl um, uh, Moin Ali instead. I don't think that would have happened. Although India showed that with three spinners, 12 overs would have probably been the way to go. But I think it would have been a big risk bowling him against Sharma and Sky, especially the way they, they were batting. So I, I understand that decision. Um, but it's really the, the execution. Even Archer, I mean, Archer went for runs as well, right? So it's not like... Um, and so did Sam Curran, yeah. yeah and but, Sam Curran, he came back for yeah, that and he got hit for 20 runs or something, right? So yeah, You're right, all of them did. All of them did. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh on just Jordan, given Jordan mm-hmm. also picked up two wickets, which the others did. But, so maybe it was all of them. Yeah. Um, but... You know, and um, and I forgot that one over at the end of Archer, which was so ordinary. Mm-hmm. He kept bowling with pace when clearly that wasn't the need of yeah. the hour. So look, England's pace bowling let them down, right? Yeah. The batting, <laughs> right? England I'm... are one of those teams, right? They, when it comes off, it looks spectacular. You know, I mean, there are no superlatives that you can use that would. Damn. Come close to describing the brilliance and the brutal elegance, which I had to coin a phrase from Nasser Hussain uh, for Rohit Sharma, ironically, but still. But then they can look so hopelessly poor, just like in the 23 World Cup, where, you know, nothing, they don't get into any sort of rhythm and it just looks really, really bizarre. And that's what we saw today, you know. Um, but I, after Butler and Salt went out, you felt the others just lacked the self-belief, which is unusual for yeah. England. Yeah, but it's, it's it's unusual, but it's it's just the way they play, right? And, and look, this is how England play, and you know, Butler's like, oh, we 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 were not defending anything, blah blah blah. But you've just had three, you've had three boundaries of Arshdeep. You know, you've kind of had the momentum in your hand, and they've brought on Akshar to literally disrupt your momentum because they know that you're going to have a go at him. And the first ball, you try to reverse sweep him, and you top edge or whatever you bottom edge it which goes straight up and you get out I mean that is I know that's how Josh Butler bats but you're literally playing into their hands right why don't you just dab it down to mid on for a couple or single and, and you know you're gonna play yourself in for a couple of deliveries at least and then have a go at, at Axer but I mean that was it you know he, he got out and then and pretty much the game changed from there um, but who and do you think the looked... bowlers were targeting I mean, didn't they have to target everyone but Bumrah and maybe Kuldeep? I mean, yeah, so the other day, when, when, you're, when you're playing as in, you have to play as if it's you're playing 16 overs, right? Because Bumrah, you're not, not going to get Correct. a 20 over. But still, I mean, they had, they got Arjdeep, you know, they, they hit him for a few boundaries. Aksar, I feel like they could have had a go at, but from ball one, I just think it was too risky. Yeah, and, especially on this wicket, yeah. And, and, and the same thing with Kuldeep, right? I mean, okay, Kuldeep, phenomenal, right? But he was also, in a way, made to look good because, I mean, he was clueless. The, the, bat, the batters were clueless, clueless against him just because they had to hit, you know, every two or three deliveries. Um, but I think they have shown in the past where if they do go after Kuldeep and if they kind of calculatedly take their risks against him, he can, you know, go for runs. Um, so... Yeah. And look, this is the point, you know, I mean, take nothing away from India. <laughs> Yeah, like, no, absolutely not. It. Absolutely not. <laughs> you know, yeah. I think we started by talking about oh, England lost the game rather than India won it. Let me be absolutely yeah, clear. Yeah. This has perhaps been the most comprehensive victory I've seen yeah. against a high quality side by India. 
right, in yeah. G20s. I mean, this, I mean, yeah. they avenged Australia in, in Ahmedabad, and now they've avenged England in Adelaide, which you might say was the biggest scar that prompted yeah. the big, you know, strategic yeah. mindset shift. And, 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 and it was, you know, it came full circle and they were absolutely terrific. We've, the bowling was exemplary, wicked to wicked, wicked to wicked, consistent, hard lens, you know, not going for any crazy magic balls or, or like, you know, uh, out of the box variations, keeping it simple, which somehow turns out ironically to be very difficult for other teams. But the batting. Right, mm-hmm. I said in the preview that this slight over dependency on Rohit Kohli and the others will need to step up if India are to succeed at the business end of the tournament, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, you know, I I, I think some of the commentators were saying, "Oh, Sky gave his wicket away." No, he did. He did exactly what he needed to do. Exactly. Forget this whole concept of fifth oh, just three runs short of his fifty. You know, his fifties and hundreds. They don't mm-hmm. matter. Not definitely not in T twenties. You know. What matters is, you know, whether you score 30, 20, whatever. I, I thought Pandya did his job, even though he only scored exactly. 23, so 23 of 11 or 12. Like, yeah. that's momentum shifting. All of them, right? Um, 23 of whatever, Pandya, Jadeja got a couple of boundaries, 17, exactly. 16 of 9. That's Akshay Patel got a, bow, got a 6. That's and that's all, all you need, need right? You know? Exactly. And, and, and Sky 47 is a massive score in the context yeah. of the game on this wicket. He was brilliant. You know, I mean, yes, we'll all talk about Rohit Sharma. And Rohit Sharma was, again, exemplary. Yeah. And he's definitely in the contention for MVP if India go on to win. And yeah. he also fires in the final. And yeah. he's been brilliant. But we know that about him, right? The question was, can someone hang around with him, right? And and, and, and it was, and yes, he did his job at 57, yeah. right? Now, you could say he could have stayed on. But again, I don't criticize him at all. He needs exactly. to back the rest of his team. He needs to keep going, yeah. right? But then that was a turning point, or could have been, if you know when Rashid got, um, uh, so when Rashid got Rohit out, it was yeah. a, then the spotlight came on in the rest of the Indian batting. And can Sky continue? But Sky had done a lot of damage before. He continued a little before he got out, and then Pandya, Jadeja, Axar even hit a couple. Like they all contributed, with the exception of Dubey and 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 Pant. Uh, Dubey, why is in the team? You 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 can tell me, Zahid, because I didn't have to answer yeah. that question. Yeah, I I don't know. There's always that one filler, right, in in, in every team. Um, so you know, you I say mean, that, and then you're sitting with Jaiswal. Yeah, in the movies, I know they won't do that. I know they won't no, break Kohli yeah, down yeah. at three. It's too late now, you know. But yeah, I mean Kohli as well. Like I mean, he he played a. I mean, he played a couple of rash shots as well. He got a fantastic six, but then I guess that that's how he wants to play as well. But I think the, the, the specifics about Rohit, obviously he hit some phenomenal shots, right? I mean, um, there were a couple over square leg and, and finally I think the, the sixes that he hit. Um, but I think there's a couple of overs in the power play, I think overs three or four, where he realized, okay, you know, it's, it's a slower pitch, so I'm not going to go kind of whack it out. But he just chipped it over the, the, the infield for a couple right. of twos. He got like six, seven, eight of, of an archer or whatever I think it was. And that just showed the guy has got sense. It's not like he's like brutally looking to muscle every ball out of the park. But he's understood the conditions. And he's like, okay, even if I mistime it, if I chip it over the infield. I've got you know enough timing to just chip it over. And I'll get a couple of runs. And I'll he'll get seven, eight in over. And, that, and that's, that's all you needed. And then when they came back after the rain break, they had these two overs where they went... Right relatively slow. I thought they would start going bang, bang. But for two hours, they went for like 10 or 11. Um, I think they had one boundary of Rashid towards the end. But it, it seemed a bit strange. I was like, what are they, have they like recalibrated the score or something? But it ended, ended up to be a fantastic move because they kind of helped themselves, get, got themselves back in and then went bang, bang towards the end. Um, so, so yeah, look, I mean, very, very sensible batting. And at the end of the day, they probably ended up with a score which was 30 runs ahead of par, which is... Look, I think the one that I, I I don't think those quiet overs were deliberate. Um, I think it was just really good bowling from England uh, because, you know, they could not guarantee, like they could not have predicted that they would get such loose stuff from yeah. Jordan and Archer, right? I mean, you know, Jordan and Archer could have yeah. bowled really good overs and then we'd be saying, oh, that's a terrible strategy. I think, but what was impressive about India was even though they did not cash in on oh, was, was it 14, 15, I, I can't remember those exactly. Yeah. Oh, well, it was between overs 14 to 17 yeah. that they sort of lost their way a little. 
And what was impressive was they didn't lose their heads after that. So yeah. in overs 17 to 20, you didn't yeah. see them like just closing their eyes and just, you know, hitting across the line or something stupid like that. They they kept rotating strikes and they waited for the bad ball and they hit the bad ball with proper cricketing shots because that's what you needed to do on this wicket. There was no panic. There was no yeah. panic. You know, because suddenly you felt, oh, Oh, are they going to settle at 150, 155? Which was, yeah. which is still a very good total on this wicket. But given where they were, they would have been a bit disappointed with that. Yeah. They did not let those negative thoughts get in. I mean, like, you know, yeah. you can see that <laughs> they are. The fact that they haven't won a tournament in the last 10 years is an absolute travesty. Right. Yeah. Uh, but in any case, speaking of yeah. tournaments and speaking of and when not win winning, <laughs> not winning IC tournaments for a long not time, not winning ICC <laughs> tournaments, we've got two of the biggest, <laughs> well, two of one all time choker, the other a recent choker in big tournaments. Yeah. India against South Africa. Who holds their nerve? That is the key question. Zahid, um, I let you start on this. Where Look, do you see this game come down to? Where do you think the game will be won and lost? I said it during our preview. I've been saying it throughout the tournament. Uh, probably been saying it since last October. Um, but I, yeah, I can't see anyone except India winning it. And now that they're, they're facing South Africa, I mean, I, I just can't see beyond beyond it. I mean, yes, you know, we talked about Afghanistan and South Africa. How kind of South Africa broke Afghanistan's back by picking up Gurbaz early and they can do the same with Sharma but this game Sharma you you can't compare Sharma and Gurbaz I'm sorry he's he's a completely different (laughs) kettle of fish and I'm I'm, you know the kind of Kohli fan or Kohli admirer that I am I still feel that he's got at least one innings in him in the World Cup so it might be the final Uh, so one of those two get going and then you'll have at least one of the others you know Sky Pant Pandya to to come in with a cameo and, and that's all you'll need uh, Barbados, you know, it's not going to be a crazy high scoring pitch. I, I don't think so. Um, you know, probably will be a 160, 170 type. It's a day game. Spin will come into it again. And I think, and yeah, that's the other thing which, I, which I'm afraid of South Africa against the Indian spinners. Um, Glass and Miller Stubbs, fantastic players, but against that spin attack, I'm not so sure. Um, so, so yeah, for me, it's, it's, it's got to be India. I, I just can't look. Um, but well done to South Africa. They're the only team, I think, in international cricket that, that have a hundred percent record of winning ICC tournament finals. Uh, they've got one out of one, <laughs> but um, Ooh. South Africa, one out of, oh, yes, if you, the knockout, the, nine, the, the 1998 champion, the precursor to the champions trophy, right? The, yeah, the ICC yeah, yeah. knockout, no, no, the no, mini no, world cup, whatever it was called back. But now, so, <laughs> 26 years later. <laughs> look, let's take a step back and just think of the you think the significance of this. The team that will win this tournament will be the first. Yeah. It'll be the first time that a team has gone on and won every single game, right? Yeah. They've won every single game in this. You know, they'll they'll win undefeated, right? Um, and that's terrific especially in a tournament that was as long drawn as this one i mean if you had said at the start that the team that wins you know they always ask these questions from experts like what which record do you think will be broken if somebody said oh a team will just go without dropping a game and go on to win the trophy everyone would have said no not not this format technically that's not right in india's case but you know <laughs> they yes, wash out <laughs> because of the washout but i think they haven't dropped game, and undefeated right? is because the right dropped. terminology not uh... Not, not winning all the yeah, yeah undefeated is right. <laughs> uh, um, undefe- uh, so they will go. Whoever wins will go undefeated. In South Africa's case, it'll be a case if they win, then they would have won all their games, which yeah. is maybe a half a step more impressive. But you know that's one. The second thing is you've got two teams who actually bore the brunt of New York conditions. So yeah. whether that made them tougher. Whether that prepared them for the dicey conditions that surprisingly also came to the floor in the West Indies, I don't know. One can speculate. Maybe it's coincidence, but that is another significant factor to bear in mind. The third is this, right? The toss. 
we have come full circle. If we had this podcast three years ago, when winning the toss guaranteed you the game if you were smart enough to bowl first, if I said to you then that in three years' time the trend will swing the other way and the final someone will win the toss and want to bat first, you would have thought I'm crazy. But I think that's what's going to happen. I think South Africa will want to win the toss and bat because they chase they, they don't chase well under pressure and they want to get Klaassen and Miller in the game as early as possible. And India will want South Africa to chase and they've done so well in defending totals and reading pitches and yeah. and that they'd want to bat as well. So now you'll have two teams who will be eager to bat first. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree, and and obviously it's 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 a morning game, right? So, yeah, obviously weather and stuff. I'm not. I think it should it should be clear. Yeah. Um. So so there are no issues of you know bowling under lights or anything like that, and it's going to be drier conditions. Slightly different when you're when you're bowling seconds. So it's, it's slightly favorable. I mean, Sharma said today as well that he would he would prefer to bat, to to bat it first, so he kind of work it kind of work well for him. But I agree. I mean, he went toss bat first. Um. If South Africa were to win the toss and bat That's first, true. I would say. Yeah, uh, which is how I like it to be honest. You know, this is cricket, cricket back, back, cricket back to the nineties, back to when you were like middling, middling scores. You don't even need them to say bat first. You win the toss, they should just go and start batting. Yeah, yeah. Up. You know what I mean? Like, but but that's how it was. Uh, yeah. But obviously, when you look at the finals in T Twenty yeah. cricket, two thousand seven was, I think, the if I recall correctly, the only time. No, is it the only time? It, uh, 2007, India. It was the only time India um, uh, that the team batting first has won the final. 07, it was defending that won. 2009, Pakistan chased. 2010, England chased. 2012, oh, 2012, 2012, West Indies defended. West Indies um, batting first. Yeah, but it was like a really, really low score to defend against. Really Sri low score. 2014, Sri Lanka chased. 16, Lanka West chased, 16, chased. West, yeah, exactly. And then yeah. Australia and England chased. Yeah, so so it's been two, clearly. Two. Two in the previous, yeah. Two in the previous uh, editions, and one of them may be a bit of an outlier. But in, in, in any case, that's something to bear in mind. But I do think this tournament has sort of, sort of broken a lot of these stereotypes. Look, I think the game is going to be won and lost. Um, and I know, as cliche as this sounds, it's going to be the middle overs, right? I think the power play, you know, India tend to do, you know, Ro- if Rohit Sharma gets going. I think India are in a commanding position, but what seals the deal for them is not how the first six overs goes. It's how the others contribute or rally around him post the six overs. The only time when I felt that India had just completely closed their eyes, won the game was against Australia. And that was yeah. that a sort of innings that, you know, yeah. it, it, it was phenomenal right now. If we get something like that again, I'll, I, I, I'm I'm happy to admit I'm wrong. But I do think the middle overs are going to be really critical. I think South Africa, uh, in South Africa's case, they've got a really strong middle order. And a middle order, you might say, hasn't quite fired as much as you would have expected them to if I had told you at the start of the tournament that they'll go seven out. Oh, well, yeah, it's more than seven now. It's sitting eight out of eight. You don't feel right? So, so, you know, so I think that's the, those are key questions. Um, in South Africa's case, it's the spin department. Can Maharaj and Shamsi do it against the best uh, batting lineup against spin to be TBC? Um, I don't think Marco Janssen and the others will will be as threatening as they would have been to Afghanistan. But again, I could be wrong. But I think it's a spin. And on India's side, you know, we talk a lot about the batting. Bumrah's four overs are literally a write-off, right? I mean, you, exactly. you said it. You need to chase it in 16. And, yeah. you know, if you if you say 16 overs, yes, India's bowling around Bumrah has, uh, barring Kuldeep, they, it's been ex- it was excellent today. But previously, I think they were a bit inflated by the pressure that Bumrah created at the yeah, other end. Of course. But I will say that, you know, I mean, if you are only going to bowl for 16 overs and Bumrah's four overs are write-off, they are... You know, they do the job really well. So yeah. how can South Africa penetrate and form a plan against India's bowling? That is the key question. Who do they attack? Who do they sort of try and see off? Because what tends to happen is 
the batting side thinks, oh, we need to target everyone except Bumrah, right? And that's why wickets stumble and, and, and there's a bit of rash cricket yeah. that gets played. Question to you, Zaid. Do you think, would you plan something like this in advance or do you have to just play it by ear when you go out there to the middle? Look, it's got to be a bit of both. I think it, it, they need to have some sort of a plan or maybe a plan B, so to speak, um, you know, in case Bumrah does take a wicket too early. Look, the obvious candidates out there, you know, if to, to name them is, is probably... It's it's I'll be made to look silly here, but it has to be Pandya and maybe one of Aksar or Jadeja, especially for someone like a David Miller, you know, taking on the left arm spinners. Um, so so they have to come up with some sort of a, you know, or, and, and for Quinton de Kock as well, right? So they you know maybe have a left right combination going so that once they do play out Boomra, they can you know they can kind of have the left right to take it to take on the spinners. So yeah, they need to strategize and come up with that's the way I would think about it, rather than specifically thinking you know, which world target, but maybe more along the lines of having a matchup and maybe having a go at Pandya. Um, but also, I think, again, the, the problem is, right, when you, the same thing happened to Australia, when, once you start losing wickets, then India are so good at just choking you out of the game that, you know, they never let you back in. So part of it is also just trying to keep your wickets in hand. I know it's an old school thing to say, but just, just never let the momentum kind of, you know, go into India's favor. Yeah. And, and, and eventually have a go, and and that, and then you never know, right? I mean, it's happened in the past, you know, classically the one fifty two game. It's, it's just, it was a one off, but it's... you know, where you, you do end up in a situation where India need to take wickets to win the game, then you can find a way to kind of you know work through them. But otherwise, yeah, I... it's, it's tough. It's it's very easy to say, but it's it's, it's very difficult to do. Yeah, I know. slightly disagree with that. I think you know, and then the reason I do that, and then the reason I disagree is because, look, if you adopt the mantra of keep wickets in hand, you will eventually get strangled by the Bumras and, and or yeah. later in the innings, right? That's what happened again, you know, when, when Pakistan played India, right? That's the one, you know, counter or de- if I'm playing devil's advocate. I think, you know, there is also a case to be made that, look, if you're just going to keep wickets in hand, you know, in conditions that do tend to offer assistance to bowlers, yeah. you will get a ball with your name on it, right? So, and then you regret the hole that you've dug yourself through just, you know, keeping wickets in hand because the wickets will end up getting lost and then your run rate will be so behind that you won't be able to catch up. So it's 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 never as black and white yeah. as that. I For me, I think that the only way is to attack and is to disrupt India's rhythm and momentum because yes, if you, you do, don't what, do, do, that, what, do what England have been did we do, do what England did and just perhaps do it better I mean I <laughs> I'm probably saying the most obvious thing but I, look I think in England's case now this is the very fine line right you could yeah. have attacked Aksa you absolutely could have but did you have to attack him on the first ball right so there's a very fine line I play a reverse sweep, right? <laughs> yeah, and also, I mean, out of all the shots in the book, it, it, it's, it's, you know, it's something about percentage play, right? Percentage, just, you know, that, you know, it, just think about the risk of every shot before selecting it, right? I mean, yes, okay, the odds on, like a reverse sweep is never an odds on shot, okay? There is a, right. it's fraught with risk, right? Your much, your easier shot is just hitting it up over mid wicket, right? Uh, even if it's against the spin, Raksha doesn't spin the ball much, right? You, you, a more conventional sweep, if at all, right? I mean, you 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 have to sort of, you know, ca- take calculated risks, right? And and I just think there's a very fine line between being aggressive and being reckless. Okay, and England in the past we've seen it happen where they yeah. sometimes just tip off the edge, and I thought they did it today. Yeah. I don't fault the 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 intent, and yeah. you absolutely should have that intent. And look, South Africa don't. I mean, they have a phenomenal batting lineup. So they're probably the England, South Africa, and India are probably your three best batting lineups, right? You know, Australia is the bowling, right? That wins them mostly. But I'd say these three, and yes, Australia are close there. So these are, so I do back South Africa's execution abilities. I'm just saying from a mentality perspective, have the intent. Don't let the, don't do what Pakistan did two years ago and watch this semi final and think you have to adapt your approach. Pakistan thought they had to like, Hit every ball for six after watching India. Uh, after watching England beat India by ten wickets, South Africa should say, "Oh, now we need to just keep our wickets in hand because we we saw how England just gave their wickets yeah. away." Absolutely not. The intent is should be there, but just complement it with a bit of intelligence. Yeah, and well, it's easier said than done. <laughs> but anyways, um, 
Zaid, predictions then? Um, I think you've already said it, but um, India, yeah. South Africa, who wins? Yeah, look, back to, yeah, India to win, back to our player-specific ones. Uh, I can't look beyond Rohit Sharma again. I know a lot of averages and stuff, but it, it, it's, he's had a trick of half centuries coming up. Uh, Rohit Sharma um, for South Africa, Aidan Markram, he's a bit more conventional. And then wickets wise, I'll give it to Kuldeep and Rabada. I'm going to have to agree with you. India <laughs> are going to win, uh, I feel. Um, I look, I. I don't think it's a sure shot. I think South Africa have a strong chance. I think, you know, they they are undefeated. They've won all their games, so that says something. But India, I think, are just too strong at the moment. Um, so, India to win. I'm going to go with... Um, it's an interesting one on India's batting. Uh, but I think I'm going to go with um, uh, Pandya, actually. Because I just think... Yeah, South Africa's bowling, death overs, bowling, and their sort of spin department it can be a bit weak. But I, I, I yeah, uh, and it could be Rohit actually. But you've said Rohit, so I'll go Pandya. Um, and and on South Africa's side, I'm going to go with Class, and I think he's due one. On the bowling, I'm going to go in a big final. I'm going to back. Bumrah to pick the most wickets. I know that doesn't often happen yeah. here because the others do, but I think it's, in the final he's going to come good. Well, he's oh, sorry, sorry, I take that back. He's always been very good, but I think he's yeah. going to be in the wickets, is what I mean. And I think the bowling uh, for South Africa, I'm going to go with Nokia. Um, right. As you can see, I'm a fan of his. So yeah. there you have it. Well, okay, just one, one last minute uh, for those who have stuck around with us. Harlik Pandya. Right, the amount of trolling that even we gave him right after the IPL <laughs> and how we always always used to pick him as MVP for all the previous tournaments that he never sh- delivered, and now there's a chance you know he's he's done done exceptionally well in any one game, but he's always done he's done well in most games. Don't right? agree. So he's actually a good candidate for the MVP because he's taken. The one time we don't runs. select him, Zayed. We've <laughs> sele- I've selected him twice. You you selected him three times. I can't remember the exact numbers, but yeah. and and what's happened? <laughs> like you know, like. He had, he had so, a horrendous IPL as well. <laughs> horrendous IPL. He's had some personal issues as well to contend yeah. with. And he has been excellent, right? Yeah. And it's just, yes, I still have an issue with his attitude sometimes. I think, you know, the way he just, you know, when it was a Livingston who was coming into bowl. Oh, no. Yeah. Was it Livingston? Yeah, I think it was Livingston. And then he just, just nonchalantly just you know, uh, because he wasn't ready nonchalant, he just looked the other way. He didn't say, oh, sorry, sorry, there's someone from such, you know, no, he just looked the other way. And I was like, what? What just happened? But I don't know, something about him that doesn't sit well with me from that attitude perspective, but no doubt in his ability. It's absolutely first class. Um, But yeah, I just wanted to to mention that as well. But but anyways. (laughs) So, in two days' time, we will have history. Either it be the inaugural champions winning it again and and in the process avenging all their biggest nightmares over the last two years. Today, Adelaide, two days ago it was Ahmedabad. Or we'll have a first-time winner. And not just a T20 World Cup first-time winner, but any, you know, a first-time winner of any World Cup in South Africa. A team that has always had the choke, you know, chokers label. But in fairness to them, they've always had it in the penultimate game yeah. in the semis or before that they've never actually been in a final could that be a good omen we should wait and see but thank you Zahid and we'll be back to review what will hopefully be a worthy uh, a game worthy of a final and, and also we're still going to review Pakistan's debacle in the world oh, Cup. No, that, that absolutely will, well. will happen I mean, <laughs> that will in come. Notes, every morning in my notes I think of new ideas and I put them in so I mean that's going to be an absolute <laughs> that's going to be a marathon video I have to say so please be prepared uh, alright all right. thanks guys. bye thank you